Hello friends and welcome to another Origins of Expressions. Today we'll be going over the phrases the devil's advocate, speak of the devil, give the devil his due. What do they all have in common? They're all phrases and idioms around the devil. Let's go ahead and get right to work and start this video. The devil is best known as the image of evil and the nemesis of good people everywhere. His image and story have evolved over the years, along with what has been called, in various cultures, the devil, has also been known as Beelzebub, Lucifer, and Satan, just to name a few. Also, with each culture comes a variety of physical descriptions including horns, wings, red skin, and cloven hoofs instead of feet. This gruesome evil being and his legion of demons continue to strike fear in people as the antithesis of all good things. With fear and evil surrounding his name, it is no surprise that we see the devil pop up in our literature as an expression. Today, we'll go over three idioms where the devil is the subject. Let's not waste any time and jump into our first phrase. The devil's advocate. The devil's advocate means somebody who takes a different position for the sake of testing an argument or just to be contradictory. Aren't you being the devil's advocate? The term devil's advocate was brought to English in the 1700s from the medieval Latin expression avocatus diaboli. In medieval Europe, devil's advocate wasn't seen so negatively. It was like chamberlain or cord wiener. It was a job title. There are various mentions in the Vatican records dating from early 1500s as an informal role called Diaboli Avocatus. In 1587, the administration of Pope Sixtus V, his administration established the formal posts of the promoter of the faith, known informally as the Avocatus Diaboli. The job description wasn't especially difficult until someone was nominated for either beautification or canonization at which point the devil's advocate was expected to draw up a list of arguments against the nominee becoming blessed or canonized. But as time went on, describing someone as a devil's advocate is to suggest that they are mischievous and contradictory, being difficult for the sake of it. The first time the current form of the expression was used in print appeared in the 1760 humorous text, Imposters Detected. It reads, by rising up and playing the true part of the devil's advocate. Today we still use this expression to say that someone is arguing a point for the sake of arguing. They are trying to upset somebody by being an opposing voice. An example sentence is, the defense lawyer played devil's advocate, explaining that the truth could be the opposite of the way it looked, but the judge wasn't having it. Well, looks like they have a lot to talk about. Let's leave them and move into our next phrase. Speak of the devil. Speak of the devil is a reference to someone who appears unexpectedly while being talked about. A light-hearted joke when the person you are talking about suddenly appears. Ooh, speak of the devil. This expression has preserved the superstitious belief that it was dangerous to mention the devil by name. This belief was strong, just like the belief in speaking the name of God. The numerous synonyms for the devil are Old Nick, Prince of Darkness, the Horned One, and the list goes on. These names are no doubt a consequence of the danger that surrounds the devil. In fact, many people who use the phrase today might not be aware that prior to the 20th century, the term wasn't meant lightheartedly at all. The full expression goes, speak of the devil and he will appear. The phrase originated in England, where it was, and still is, more often said as talk of the devil. This phrase is old and appears in various Latin and Old English texts from the 16th century. The Italian writer Giovanni Torriano has the first recorded version in contemporary English in Piazza Universal in 1666. It reads, the English say, talk of the devil, and he's presently at your elbow. Throughout history, we see this phrase pop up from Shakespeare to modern music and, of course, in everyday conversations. Today, the phrase is used to acknowledge the coincidence of someone arriving at a scene just at the time when they are being talked about. 
Clearly, nothing sinister is implied by this. It is just a joking way of referring to the person appearing at the same time a conversation about them is happening. An example sentence is, Did you hear what happened to Mary today? Ooh, speak of the devil. There she is. Yikes. Let's let them continue their conversation as we move into our next phrase. Give the devil his due. Give the devil his due means pay the devil what you owe him or give your rival appropriate praise. Well, you better give the devil his due. This expression originated from a historical play, Henry IV, Part One, by William Shakespeare, to have been printed no later than 1597. Henry IV, Part One, is part of a series of historical plays tracing the career of Prince Henry, also known as Prince Hal who would eventually become England's King Henry V. The phrase, give the devil his due, comes up in a conversation between Prince Henry and his friend Poins. It reads, Sir John stands to his word, the devil should have his bargain, for he was never yet a breaker of proverbs. He will give the devil his due. Today, we will still use this phrase when we have to speak of some goodness in a bad person, thing, or situation. An example sentence is, Heather is very arrogant and offensive, but she is beautiful. I'll give the devil his due. Well, let's leave her and move on. Ooh, fun fact. Did you know that Halloween originated as the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain? Yep, that's right. It's where people would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off ghosts. Over time, Halloween moved away from focusing on ghosts to the festival we know and love today, a day focused on games, foods of the season, and festive costumes. Speaking of costumes, did you know that the most popular Halloween costume is a witch? Are you wondering, where does the devil fall in the list of the most popular Halloween costumes? Well, I was too. So with the help of Google, I found that the devil costume is ranked at number 20. Wow! Well, whether the devil was number one or number 20, Halloween still remains the same old fright-inducing festival it has always been. Traditional costumes like witches, devils, and ghosts will always have a unique place in everyone's heart. Well, that's the information that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed learning about the origins of our idioms and phrases. I would love to have you subscribe if you did. Think of it as a way to give the devil his due by subscribing to the channel. Plus, subscribing is quick and easy and I would really appreciate it. Oh yeah, quick question before you go. Do you know any idioms or phrases around the devil? Maybe you know other idioms or phrases on an entirely different subject. I would love to see them. Leave them in the comments below. And you know, if I use one of the phrases, I'll give you a shout out. Thank you again for watching and subscribing. I really appreciate your support. Until next time, bye.